Okay, here we go. All right. Nick, Nicholas Solis, uh, we are launching a new channel, the Children's Literature Channel on NBN, New Books Network. And you're my first uh, victim, I, I mean interviewee. I'm excited and scared, so I can't wait. Okay, so um, we're gonna be talking uh, about your first book today, uh, which is The Staring Contest, um, a great picture book, came out about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And since then you've had another wonderful children's book, The Color Collector, we're gonna to refer to it uh, because it's so different. Oh yeah. A and, um, and basically uh, we want to learn about you and your process, your craft, uh, and how you became one of 10,000 or 50,000 um, people who write for children who actually have traditional publishers fighting over your work. So, so welcome, Nick. Thank you, Mel. I appreciate you having me. I'm excited to be here. Okay, so, so, so guest. <laughs> absolutely. So, so start at the beginning, a little bit about yourself and how did you come to the staring contest? Um, okay. Uh, I've been writing forever. So I started when I was about eight years old. I was a kid. I wrote knockoff Encyclopedia Brown books. I don't know if you if you know those, but those are my favorites. And I would write novels and uh, writing and reading were just a way to escape. It was a way to get away and a way to find my uh, find kind of some inner peace. And so as I grew up, I started um, I became a teacher, an elementary teacher. I've been teaching for 22 years and I would. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I would keep writing during that time I would share my stories with my students but I wasn't doing anything with them it was just a way to get the kids to write because I believe like if you write and you model then the kids write also and so we'd all have these amazing stories we'd be sharing yeah Nick and, you're uh, getting you're getting way ahead of me here oh sorry sorry <laughs> tell me about your childhood what were you running away from uh okay well we can get deep um my parents got divorced when I was very young and so uh there was a lot of moving around and there was a lot of like uh, going to new houses, new places. My stepdad and I didn't get along too, too well. And so um, he didn't like kids and I didn't know how to be around him. So I'd get in the car and I'd boom, open up a book. And so the book was the way of me being able to kind of escape. And so when I get home, I would climb a tree, get on the roof. And I'd once again be reading till, you know, dinner time and then after dinner. I'd go hide in my room, maybe watch some TV and go to sleep. But that was for me, that was what, that's why I love reading so much. It gave me an escape. And so uh, it was, yeah. And plus when you move around a lot, you don't have a lot of friends. And so a book's always going to be your friend. It's always going to be there for you. And so that's kind of, kind of where I was when I was growing up. Okay. But you write for um, the five-year-old crowd. Yeah. I love, well, because I have the mentality of a five-year-old. I think I have the maturity of a young child. And so, uh, you know, if you're looking at my two books that are published out right now, one's all about being silly and funny and one's all about being lonely and kindness. And so that's kind of, if you want a real true representation of who I am, that's kind of where I'm at and where, especially my childhood. So uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's me in a nutshell. What, what, did, you, uh, what did you study? When I was a kid, I studied education. It was, I, I was always gonna be a teacher. I started working as a, a, at a daycare and probably when I was 16, 17, and I loved it. And I tried other jobs. I would go sell clothes and that was okay. Or data entry, I hated. I did a, I was a waiter for two days. I burnt my hand twice and I was like, well, I'm not a waiter anymore. So I went back to, to the daycare. But yeah, it's always been, it's always been something with kids. I've just always been, I'm great with kids. Like, we get we get along well. They understand me. I understand them. Adults scare me sometimes, so so kids are just easy to work with and they're fun. I promise not to scare you. And beyond that, I'm six thousand miles away, so I think I'm okay right now. You got a kid energy too, so we're, we'll be fine. <laughs> well, this is my theory. I, you know, if you write for five year olds, then somewhere inside you're you're a five year old. I agree. I'm okay. I'm probably the most immature in my classroom, so the kids just like. Mr. Sleece, you need to grow up. I'm like, I don't want to grow up. We're fine. You should see me teaching university then. <laughs> I get the students to bark. 
Um, so uh, let's go back to you. Okay. Um, so uh, you broke into writing. How long did it take you to get published? So I started in 2014, I started taking classes at the Writing Barn, which is really close to my house. And I, I love telling my students this because I tell them I would stay with you during the day and then I'd go back to school at night and they'd be like, you go back to school? And I'm like, yeah, because this is something I, was, I wanted to do and I was passionate about. And so I started taking classes there and I just class after class after class and a lot of them were picture book classes, some were uh, novel classes, but little by little, I just kind of developed the skill. and so. Um, at one of the weekend intensives, it's like a weekend getaway with authors and agents and stuff. I was presenting a book and they're like, this is a very sad book. You seem like a very happy person. I'd like to see something very uh, funnier from you. What, why don't, what, can you, do you think you could do that? I'm like, yeah. And so I went outside and I started thinking and that's where I came up with the staring contest. And, and then about um, two years later, I presented at, a, at another writing barn thing and there was an editor in the audience and they, they liked what they, they heard and they liked what they saw because I had little, little sketches that went with it. And that's kind of how it went. So yeah, around, I want to say 2000, everything's all off now with the pandemic. I get, I, my whole timeline is off, but I think around 2017, 18, things started moving. And I think 2019 is when I sold it. I think somewhere in that. I think it was 2019 because it was pretty quick that it came out. Because you, I sold, you, you sold it without an agent? Yeah, I had uh, my first two books I pretty much sold, not without an agent, but it was the weirdest thing. I sold two books on the same day that I signed an agent, but I had done it through different ways. So like the color collector was at a conference when I was just talking to a publisher and they were and I had presented. Now that stayed with the publisher for over a year and a half, but they contacted me the same day that I signed with Air Deek, my agent. And then the staring contest, I had an agent, but I wasn't, I wasn't just, I wasn't uh, trying to promote it through the agent. I was just like sharing it. Cause on Saturday nights, you share a story that you've written and they liked it. And they were like, we like what you do. And so I got everybody in touch with each other. So it's very interesting. Like my third book, my agent actually sold, but the other two, I kind of miraculously fell into it either by just talking to people or putting myself out there. It just kind of happened. And so uh, I'm a big fan of like, just talk to people. You never know what'll happen and share your work. Absolutely. So um, do you think that writers should have agents? I do mostly because I tried for years, uh, you know, to that 2014 to 2019, I was trying for years, submitting, uh, submitting to agents, submitting to writers, submitting editors. I find it very easy. I don't like the idea of trying to sell myself. I'm really bad at selling myself. So an agent will do that. So I love the fact that I'm like, I really like the story here and they go take it to the world and see where they can send it. Plus they do have a lot of connections, but my story is untraditional. <clears throat> so just talking to somebody, you never know. So I would just say, try every route. If this is your path, if this is what you want to do, you want to be a writer, go to conferences, go to take classes, talk to people. You know, I mean, that's, you never know what'll happen. So I like, I like having the agent, but some of this stuff happened without an agent, so. So let's go back now to the uh, staring contest. Okay. We're having the smiling contest today, but this is a, the staring contest. Was there a eureka moment when you were outside thinking about it? it? It was, I remember sitting down going, okay, I want something that my students would like. I always kind of think about my students. And so I think, being a teacher has really helped me with that. And I, and I kept going through like other games in my head. I was like, what game did I play when I was a kid? And the staring contest just popped in my head and these eyeballs just popped into my head. And so I, it wasn't even like I drew, I wasn't even like I was writing a story. I actually drew the pictures with the story and it was only 12 slides at the beginning. But I was like, this is kind of cool. And I went back in, I showed one of the editors so like, you have something here. It's not done but you have something here keep on working on it and so my eureka moment was going like what's something that's universal that every kid has done and i think every kid in almost every country has played this sort of game at some point you know we all have eyeballs and so and we've all stared at somebody and trying to see if they'll blink so yeah 
And do you have any background as an artist? Because you ended up as the illustrator of your own book. No, I love drawing and I've been doing it with my students and, but, uh, uh, but there's no, I have no background. And I talk to my, when I do these presentations and we talk about growth mindset and this idea of just trying stuff, like not saying I can't, but I can't do it yet. Like the power of yet. And so I tell my students, I was like, I was never supposed to be an illustrator. You know, I drew them because I wanted the, um, I wanted the editor and the agent to understand what the story, metafiction is really hard if you don't have pictures because sometimes they can't see it even though I see it so clearly. And so uh, I drew the pictures and, but they liked the pictures and they said, okay, you're doing it. And I said, I can't do it. I'm not an illustrator. I'm like, no, we like what you did. You do it. We use Adobe. And I'm like, I don't know how to use Adobe. So I had a friend teach me Adobe in two weeks. And I'm like, so it just, it's one of those things you just, you tried and it, and it just happens. So, uh, and now, cause it got published in Tur Turkey, I'm an international author illustrator and I never thought I'd be here. And so it's just, and it's, it's funny. I show the kids and we do circles and we go, Ooh, and a dot. Ah. And it's like, it's not very hard, but it, it's just something you, I tried doing and it actually worked out. So, so Nick, you are a, a living embodiment of another picture book called the dot. Yes. You I are, <laughs> who does it? But you are the dot, you know, <laughs> sign here. <laughs> so, so you want to tell the audience, um, who the man behind or the figure behind the staring contest is? Oh, go deeper. I got to know what, do you, what, what's that question really asking? Who the, who the book we're competing against? No, you're competing against the, the reader. Yeah. In a staring contest. But I'm intrigued by the, the person in the book challenging or the embodiment challenging the reader to beat uh, him in a staring contest. Yeah, that would probably be the person that my wife gets annoyed by. It's a part of me that likes to challenge everything. And uh, I love it because, you know, it's, it's when you're a teacher, you're the biggest person in the class. You usually win. Like, you know, every, you know, all the games and stuff. And so when I play with the kids, they're like, you beat us again. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm just better at it. And like, we joke around and we play around. And that's that, that cheeky side of me that I think, is in the book, the, the one who's challenging you to a staring contest. He thinks he's the best at everything. And uh, he thinks he's always gonna win and he'll cheat to win. And there's a little piece of that in me, but I also love that at the end, he loses and he understands, he gets humbled. And I think I need that sometimes too, where you just need to humble yourself and be like, you're not always gonna win. And this isn't always, and so I love it when, you know, I, I've taught chess for years and when, uh, an eight-year-old beats me I am humbled and shocked and I'm like no and I and they love it because they see this grown man like no but it's fantastic when you see these genius kids just really come into their own uh, Nick I haven't done a word count but I'm guessing that uh, the staring contest uh, comes in at the less than 200 words yeah I want to it's been a year since I've looked at it I think it was <laughs> I honestly, I think it was 397. Really? Because there's a few times where he actually talks, he has little longer monologues and stuff. But like I said, I can't, I can't, it might, it might be 297, I'm not sure. So the people, you know, people who um, look uh, askance at children books and, and writers and they say, uh, well, what, what is this? Why do you need to take umpteen conferences and, and lessons and, and, and hone your craft for years and years. It's just a book with a few hundred words and, right. and silly eyeballs. I mean, everybody can do it, but you and I know that it's extremely rare and it's a gift and it's difficult. Could you talk about that, please? Dispel yeah, I mean, the notion that writing a picture book is easy. It's incredibly hard. And the other thing is I, because I've taken these classes, I've worked with a lot of amazing authors who've had fantastic books and they still can't get those published. And so it's this very interesting mix of, yeah, I would love to be like picture. I mean, I, I grew up thinking picture books were easy. I grew up thinking like, I wrote this picture book. I don't understand why people don't want to buy it. And then I 
started taking class i'm like oh my picture book is awful like there's it's 1500 words for a, a fiction picture book like this, no one's gonna buy this nobody can read through this it's too many words and like all these these little skills that you didn't know they take time to build and they take time and you only learn that through other classes especially with other authors and so it's this weird mix of you creating a, a product that people are going to want to read that is going to bring them back over and over again because publishers are also going to want readability they're going to want to read it they want want people to, to like the book and recommend the book but also to read that book over and over again and not get bored parents are going to want a book that they can read over and over again and not get bored because their kids are going to love these books and they're going to want and then once you've created this product then it's also a matter it's a subjectivity where where somebody just says i like it you know finding the right editor finding the right agent it's all this wonderful mix so when it hits it's amazing but it's very hard for it all to hit and to create that first product is very hard too so um i don't know it's it's a lot of work it's not as easy it's not as easy as i think we all thought picture book writing could be i sometimes i find it way harder than novel writing because with novel writing you want more words and but picture books you have to chop down a lot and those words are precious to you and you're like but i can't get rid of this <laughs> you know and like nope you have to get rid of that because this is the tight amount that we need so to grab somebody's attention it's a lot it's it's all a mix so you have this um slightly mean but still empathetic uh, character in your book challenging the reader to beat him at a uh, at a staring contest yes the idea is brilliant uh the uh, artwork is um minimalistic yeah uh how worried were you that somebody would just riff on it given that it was brilliant and simple i'm always i'm still worried that somebody will riff on it and like i i have other ideas that i would love to use these eyeballs with and I, a part of me is always worried that I'm going to lose this idea and somebody's going to take it. But another part of me loves this idea, especially with kids, because I, I keep going back to it, but I, this is my mindset. My mindset is always the child. If a child can read this and say, I can do that, then great. I've, I've, I've inspired somebody to become an author. I've inspired somebody to become an illustrator. I'm fine with that. You know, I, I, I think it is the simplicity that kids are drawn to. And I'm really excited about sharing that. And so I hope, I hope they like that. And I hope they do draw their own. I've had kids send me books that they wrote. And I was like, this is amazing. And it's just eyeballs, but they added stuff to it. I'm like, I love it. Keep going for it. Let's do this. Incredible. I have to, I need to get you to teach me to draw eyeballs. So um, Nick, would it be okay if you read a couple of pages? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I'm gonna just do, I kind of really like the beginning. And I'll, so I'll read a few pages from the beginning and then I'll stop uh, and I'll stop at a spark, part where I want it. So, and I always usually get off to the side so I can really get into it. Staring contest, go. Ha ha, I knew you weren't ready. I'm totally gonna win. I can't believe you agreed to compete in a staring contest with me. I'm a staring master. I can stare all day long and i'll never blink not even you blow my eyes blowing my eyes go ahead try it whoa i can't believe you blew in my eyes that's cheating but i didn't blink told you i'm the best and it keeps on going but that's one of my favorite because that's that interaction that i liked i like that metafiction that breaking the fourth wall and it's really fun to see all your little the the little kids on screen going and blowing or they all hold their eyes open to make it through the whole thing nick so. i i have bad news from you oh no you. what happened i'm 70 years old and i blew on the page <laughs> and you know it's you know it doesn't matter how old you are you're reading the book and you're keeping your eyes open oh, so yeah. uh i i mean I, this is the magic that you have well, in this you. incredible book and um, do you want to read some of it from the Turkish translation? <laughs> I would love to show you the Turkish, but the only one I am good, because this is what it got in Turkish. The only one I teach the students when I'm reading with them is 
at the very end when the book does finally lose he blinks and in the book it says blink but in turkish it's kerp kerp and so we go over kerp kerp is turkish for blink and so i just think that's fantastic it's the only word i know in turkish and so mm -hmm. that's what i teach my kids the students G come on give it try and read some of the turkish i don't know go. i <laughs> all right i i don't know how look at this goes mama yarusaman sinar va missa basla i don't know turkish and i'm sorry i don't even know how to pronounce it no but you see here's the thing nick if you just read it without the caveats people would think that you're speaking turkish right <laughs> except for people in turkey and then i feel so bad for people going you're destroying the book i'm like okay i'm so sorry <laughs> Uh, we don't even know if that Turkish is good either, you know. True. You just true. you just, you just think it's a Turkish translation. I just blindly agree. Yes. Let, let's uh, so um, let's move on now to your second book, uh, yeah. the color the color collector because it's so different. It is. It it and oddly that remember when I was talking about how I showed books and people were like, "This is kind of a sad book." That was the one they were talking about. They were talking about the color collector and. If you look at me as an author, that's my other side. And that's where I would start a new school and I'd know no one and no one would talk to me. And all I desperately wanted was for somebody to say hello. And so I kind of wrote a book about that. And it's influenced by a few other things. I've had a lot of students who I ask, how are your parents? Or where, you know, when, and, oh, I haven't seen my dad in three or four months. I'm like, really? I'm like, yeah, they're in Mexico. They're on the other side of the border. They can't. So it's also about this idea of like leaving home and being separate and like just kind of being lonely and trying to find trying to find a friend and needing a little bit of kindness in the world so in that book where you have a girl who collects colors mm -hmm. um your your character nick in the book is the girl yes i'm the girl and the it, it's interesting because i really liked working with sleeping bear because i they this this young man right here was, was going to be blonde hair, blue eyes. And when we were going through it, they asked, you know, is there any changes? And I'm like, well, I would like to see myself represented, you know, as a Mexican American, I would like darker hair, you know, a, a tanner skin. And they were, they were fine with that. They liked the idea. And so this one looks like me, but I really am, you know, uh, Violet, the little girl in the book, uh, as far as like, kind of just wanting to somebody to say hello to me. Where, where did you get the idea for this? Well, okay. Originally, it was I was at an art gallery and I saw this uh, this artist that I really loved, um, and there was this girl, black hair, all gray, reaching up for a leaf, like a really beautiful leaf that was falling, and she was picking it up. And on her back, she had a backpack, like an open satchel, with all these colorful leaves in it, and she was putting it in in the backpack which was beautiful, but her eyes were the saddest eyes. This, uh, this author, Grand Francois, I mean, sorry, this um, artist, Grand Francois, does very sad eyes. And I was just struck by how sad her eyes were and why she was so sad. And that's kind of where the story jumped off from. And my first story, like I said, I wasn't a great writer. I had to take class, I had to, but my first story was full of writing and I couldn't figure out, it was full of words, 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 words. And one night at two o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I was like, wait, this is what the story should be like. And if you read it, it's almost like I wanted to read like a really sparse poem. I wanted it to go with the sparseness of the colors, all that. So it's very, very short. It's very small. And I gutted a ton of words because I wanted that loneliness to feel there in the writing as well. It's such a lovely book. Um, a girl who collects colors to recreate her previous home. Yeah. I love it. I mean, and the illustrator, uh, Rene uh, Metanou, is amazing. I didn't give any like tips. It wasn't only to let that, uh, where I wanted to change the author, I mean, the, the boy's uh, hair color and stuff. But for the most part, her bringing in little bits of color throughout the book at the beginning, you, there's nothing. It's black and white. And it goes uh, totally against the, the book's title. And you're like, 
I thought this was gonna be about color. And it just builds and builds as their friendship builds. Ah, I just, she is amazing. So yeah, it's fantastic. Um, you know, every, every book reminds us of another book. Uh, but I always think that when a, a book reminds you of another book, it's the biggest compliment. Agreed. So uh, I'm, uh, when I looked at it, I, I thought of the uh, Too Much Yarn book. Yes, I know that one. And, um, and I was blown away by that. Um, what else would you like to say about this incredible book? For me, I, you know, if people are looking for a book about kindness and a book about empathy, I would have them check that out. I've started using it at the beginning of my school year with my kids. And we talk about why there's no color at the beginning. And it's this idea of like her life felt very black and white. And all the boy does is say, hello. You know, he, he waves and color starts to come in. And so when I tell my students, if you see somebody sitting alone, if you see somebody having a hard day, a simple hello could change their life. And I've taught them like that year that I was in middle school were kind of where this is kind of based on. I had two choices. I was either going to stay with my mom and I was being mis miserable. Or I was going to go live with my dad and try something new. And my stepdad was like, give it one more year. You know, after this, you can go live with your dad. And I gave it one more year. And by eighth grade, a kid, Dylan Peterson, and I've dedicated a book said hello to me. I made friends with his friends. I made new friends. I, you know, and it just went in this path to where I stayed in, in this part of town. I taught at this school. I met my wife. I have my beautiful son. Like none of that would have happened without this simple little hello and somebody being kind for the sake of being kindness, for the sake of being kind. He was, he was a very popular kid. He didn't have to do this. He didn't have to say hello. And it, and it just changed my life. And so I want people to understand a simple wave, a simple hello can change someone's life. So uh, Nick, you've exposed two sides of your personality. Yeah. In the staring uh, contest, we have a little bit of um, almost snarky Nick. Oh yeah, and people who know me know that's me. And, uh, and in, your, in your color collector, you have the, um, the lonely um, boy reaching out for hello. A uh, beautiful, a uh, such a generous book, and of course, uh, I don't want to go into it anymore. But I like everybody to buy it, and uh, I think that uh, I think that you're on your way to uh, to stardom. Well, thank you very much. So uh, before we part, one of the things that I noticed was that you wanted an award for a, for being a diverse author. Yeah, the Walter Grant. But, yeah, but, but you seem to be, to me, to be as non-diverse as anybody I've ever met. I you, have, you, you have hair. Yes, I have hair. I, <laughs> I you know, uh, growing up Mexican-American, and I mean, this is a much deeper talk because this is something I've kind of been going through in some of my books also, this idea of where do I fit in? Where do I belong? And I think there's a lot of diverse authors that, feel this way too. I wrote an article um, last Christmas or last winter for the SCBWI newsletter and it was about this idea of like sometimes I don't feel enough of this culture to be part of this culture and sometimes I don't feel enough of this culture to be part of this culture and so sometimes I don't know where I fit in and that also includes I don't know where my writing fits in and so I've been really struggling with that but I've come to the conclusion of like I don't have to fit in. I can be wherever I want and I can be whoever I want. And Nick, so, I, if, you, if you ask me, I would tell you that to be a writer, almost by definition, you can't fit in. Who's going who's gonna to buy your books if you fit in? Yeah. yeah. A little girl went to school. She had her, uh, her peanut butter and, and jam sandwich. She did her homework and she went home. It, yes. It, a truer thing has never been said. I think writers are looking to express themselves. And I think people want to see that window. And I, I think they want to look through that window and, and be a part of that world. And so, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. That makes me feel really good. So Nick Nicholas Solis, uh, it's been great interviewing you for the new Children's Literature Channel on NBN. Uh, I can't think of anybody uh, better suited 
to carry all that weight on your shoulders. Um, how, how old is Leo, your son? He's 19 months, about to be 20 months. And so we sent him for breakfast because he's a tornado right now. And we were worried he'd come through here and rip stuff up. I have this okay. behind me because to, to block all of the, the messiness that is my house. <laughs> so at, at some stage, we'll, uh, we'll help you create one of these. This is a real backdrop. Yes, I know. I want one. I, need one. I have an office that I need to redo. So someday we'll get there. Okay. So, uh, Nick, this was uh, wonderful. Uh, you have another book coming out uh, in it's uh, fall, fall of 2022. It's the, My Town, We Pueblo. And what well, this is a, a story of? It's a story of basically my family, like right along the border between the United States and Mexico. My grandma had a house and my grandparents still live down there. And so we would go down there every holiday, every summer. And so we would go across the border into Mexico pretty easily. And so it's about two kids that cross the border and go visit the other town. And they basically say the same thing about each other's towns. They love it, the food, and it's just, a, it's, it's in English and in Spanish, but there's a big, and I won't, give the, I won't give away the ending, but there's a big like gut punch when you get to the end. And so I'm excited about it. It's with Nancy Paulson books out of Penguin. I'm, very excited with how this looks. I've seen the pictures, they're gorgeous. I can't wait for people to see it. But, uh, but it, it's, it's basically, we're all the same. So why do we treat each other differently sometimes? Nick Solis, you're anything but the same. Uh, it's been great and uh, I look forward to talking to you offline and uh, to interviewing you again in September of 2022. Well, thank you so much, Mel. I had a blast today. Thank you for having take, me. Your take, take care. And thank you so much for being the first guest, the launch of our new channel. This is exciting. Thank you. Out for launch. <laughs> take care. Thank you.